Well, the National Plastic Summit is off to a terrific start. I'm joined by representatives of the future, Molly Steer, uh, carefully supervised by Great Barrier Reef Envoy Warren Ench. Warren, thank you for bringing Molly's determination to take plastic out of the oceans, a determination you share, to Parliament House. Scarlett's from Melbourne and Alexander is from Sydney. And we've also got representatives of industry here, Pact Group, McDonald's and... Nestle. Nestle. <laughs> and um, the reason they're here is because pledges have already been made. And the message for today is to step up as industries, as governments, as consumers, as students who are directing some of their families about what they need to do in their own recycling bins at their own curbside. But more importantly, the strategic view of how we get this right, how we tackle the challenge of plastic, and we turn something that we were all picking up yesterday in Clean Up Australia, uh, not something you put in landfill or a litter bin or a hole in the ground, but something that you create a resource with that becomes a product that is demanded for an end-to-end -end Australian designed plastic processing solution. So enough from me, I'm going to invite Raphael from Pact Group to talk about his announcement. We'll do a bit of a uh, soft shoe shuffle here at the mics and then um, we might bring the other companies in. But over to you, Raf. Thank you, Minister Lee. <clears throat> yeah. So Australians, as you all know, are some of the best recyclers in the world. And they deserve a circular economy that ensures recyclables are converted into value-added products. I'm delighted to announce PAC Group's commitment to lead the circular economy through significant investment in existing and new facilities over the next five years. We will be working with government and like-minded partners to invest $500 million in the circular economy by 2025. It's only by bringing these parties together to invest in infrastructure that allows us to take responsibility and solve our current waste crisis. Our strategy to lead the circular economy through investment in our packaging, reuse, infrastructure and recycling businesses is critical as these activities provide a home for the majority of plastics that are recycled. We are also investing in further technology and material science to ensure increased inclusion of recycled content. We are proud to act and encourage others to join us. Australia deserves a world-class circular economy. Thank you. That's fantastic. It's um, $500 million and it will go a long way. And Pact Group's understanding, deep understanding over 30 years of recycling in this country is going to be welcomed as we move forward. I'm now going to ask um, Assistant Minister Trevor Evans to uh, introduce Nestle and we'll hear from them and Trevor has been working very closely on the detail of the policy that we are supporting when it comes to the federal government's contribution to that end-to-end -end recycling and building manufacturing capability and capacity. Over to you Trevor. Well, thank you Minister, thank you all for joining us here today as is demonstrated by so many people coming together with such great announcements and pledges to make. Uh, everybody has a role to play when it comes to tackling the recycling and waste reduction challenges uh, in front of us. Uh, that's why we've brought so many people here together in Canberra, so many experts and leaders on the topic of plastics to really share their knowledge uh, and try to coordinate their efforts into the future. Now, the federal government can do a number of things. As the Prime Minister uh, uh, recognised this morning, we can bring a level of national leadership to this issue, which will elevate at uh, these issues in the national consciousness. We can coordinate the efforts of industry and environment groups and local government and states. And we can set policies and extend the planning horizon by setting targets into the future for all of us to meet. But what we can't do is kid ourselves that a federal government in Canberra has all of the answers. 
The answers are held by the experts and the leaders, people in industry, people in communities. And by bringing them all together, they bring the product by product, waste stream by waste stream, area by area solutions that we're going to need going forwards if we're really to solve these big challenges. It's been our huge privilege to help support through our policies the work of some great organisations who are doing some amazing things. And as I introduce uh, Sandra from Nestle to step up to the table and talk about some of the great work they're doing, I'll just uh, talk a little bit about how the government is supporting things like the Australasian recycling label and our national packaging targets so that over time, Consumers, customers, voters all around Australia can have confidence that the things that they're buying and the decisions they're making in terms of which bin they put things in is leading to a more sustainable future. Welcome to the microphone, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, as one of the largest food companies here in Australia, we are aware and we understand that making or packaging 100% recyclable is just not enough. We need to work together and collaborate with other manufacturers, other brand uh, owners, with suppliers, with uh, waste management organizations, with the community and with the government to find solutions that will close the loop of recycling. In this sense, I am very proud to announce today that we are um, in a partnership with IQ Renew to run a trial to collect soft plastics from more than 100,000 households in Australia. Why is this important? Soft plastics is probably the one kind of plastic that is the least recycled in Australia and in the world. Less than 1% of the soft plastics gets recycled. This is just unacceptable. So we are hoping that with this trial, we will understand better many of the dynamics of how people uh, collect the, the, the soft plastics and how can we really dramatically increase the collection of soft plastics. This will not only divert soft plastics from landfill but will be the first step in the circular, circular economy of soft plastics because once the, once the soft plastics is collected it will, be it will be converted in something else and hopefully again in a, a recycled food grade soft plastic that we can use again to manufacture our products. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much Sandra. Now Coralie's here from McDonald's and um, Coralie I'd love you to step Kylie, um, I'd love you to step up and talk about the announcement that some of us read about this morning and it's pretty exciting when it comes to taking plastic out of our environment. Thank you very much. Um, McDonald's is very proud to continue to use our scale. Um, to make sure that we can lead in the area. And as you're aware, last year we did commit uh, to removing the plastic straw by the end of the year in our businesses. The pact that we have made today is in addition to this to actually remove all of our plastic cutlery in the restaurants as well. This is gonna remove 540 tonnes of single-use plastic out of the system. And we're very proud to make this commitment today and our ongoing commitment to this area. Thank you. Now we've uh, saved the best till last. You think I'm talking about the children, but I'm actually talking about uh, Enchi. Um, Warren, would you like to introduce uh, Molly, Scarlett and Alexander and Thank you we'd very, love you all to speak. Thank you very much indeed, Minister. And we've heard, we've heard today about government, their commitment and what their role in dealing with this particular challenge. We've heard about, uh, from our chief scientist, what science can do in helping us to resolve this issue and to deal with this issue. And of course, we've had some fabulous announcements here from industry. All of these three are absolutely critical when we're dealing with this challenge. However, the most important one, the most important person in dealing with this is young people like Alexander, like Molly, like Scarlett, and every single one of you standing here today. Because what drives the change is you as consumers. What you choose to buy and what you choose to reject. <coughs> and it's young people like this, like, like Scarlett, like Molly, like Alexander, that is really raising the stakes 
and really challenging government, science and industry. And it's what they choose to buy and what they influence other people to buy and to reject is really what's going to end up as being the absolute success of where we're headed in this particular one. So I say thank you to three of you young people representing a whole myriad of young people right around across the country. And I say that as leaders in your own communities and somebody here in Molly, who I have to say was her advocacy and her inspiration that actually got me involved in this area, I'd say thank you to you because it's through your leadership, through your voices, that we're going to see the most significant change. So I'll hand it over to you girls. Molly, would you like to say something? Um, I'm so happy about all the pledges that everybody's been making today and I'm so glad that everybody's listening and agreeing that we have to do something and it's, if any time we should start, it should be now. Hold well on, hold on. Well said. Would you like to add anything out of you? Not really. Okay. Okay. Well, that covers it beautifully. Yeah. Okay. Questions for our fabulous industry leaders or anyone? <laughs> Well, PACT has described what they will do. We're all playing our part. What we have said is that we will support investments that are made by state governments and made by industry that will allow the facilities and the processing plants and the real practical recycling on the ground to take place. Those are conversations I'm having with state ministers right now in the lead up to the reaffirming of our waste export ban by COAG in March. So with the export ban transitioning in over time, we will be building the processing capacity behind it that means that we can genuinely start a circular, end-to-end -end Australian economy in recycling. We've heard that money is going to be seen in the next five years. Mm. Will those policies be in place by then? Absolutely, and we're seeing investment now. The Prime Minister mentioned an investment on the Victorian uh, New South Wales border, which will process up to 28,000 tonnes of plastic. And uh, that was mentioned by PACT as one of the partners. So we're already seeing the types of investment following the announcement of our waste export ban that are building the recycling capacity. And we're seeing new clean streams of waste coming on stream through container deposit schemes and other initiatives. And some of our uh, work will be about upgrading the material recycling facility so that you actually get the best possible raw material product coming out of that facility to feed into, for example, a plastic pelletising plant. Well, it's a good question and certainly waste and recycling haven't traditionally been Commonwealth Government areas of public policy. That's because we see recycling take place uh, at state government level, on your curbside with your bin collection and then waste levies are collected by state governments and we'd like to get a few more of those levies back out of the state government treasuries and on the ground in practical recycling facilities and that's starting to happen. So. Um, uh, it, it, it has taken, I believe, national leadership to bring environment ministers together, to bring state governments together, to support the Prime Minister's waste export ban, to agree to the timelines that it's phased in under, but then for all of us to collaborate, work together, make the investment, make the connections, have industry step up, and I thank them for that because this is not something that governments do. This is something that governments partner with industry. It is industry that invests, has skin in the game, understands the marketplace, and, um, and is leading in front of their consumers, their shareholders and their clients who are also demanding this because the point Warren Ench made is a really good one. It is that it's consumers who choose, consumers who agree that it's okay to have a ban on single-use plastic bags in their supermarket, that they don't want to use helium balloons at children's birthday parties, that small pieces of plastic are ingested by marine wildlife and cause problems. We've all heard of that being more plastic than fish in the ocean by 2050, but you may not know that by that date, it's expected that 99% of seabirds will have ingested plastic. Now, these are, these are facts that our students um, and all of us should take, take very seriously to heart, and that's part of the action that we're undertaking. 
Well, again, the announcement this morning is a uh, recycling plastic pelletising plant that is near my hometown of Albury and it will employ 30 people when it's up and running and a lot more during its construction. It will take plastic from all over the East Coast uh, in theory and it will be balanced by other similar facilities. Now, they're rural and regional jobs. Over nine jobs for every 10,000 tonnes of plastic recycled is a real generator of economic activity for rural and regional Australia, one that we, re we really value. But similarly, we've got uh, Stephen Dawson, West Australian Environment Minister, here at the summit today, and he's talked to me about solutions for remote communities, mobile solutions that provide, for example, jobs in Indigenous communities, and again, treat the plastic that we're seeing in our environment as a resource to be used and a value to add. Mm. We're not doing this by ad hoc legislation or regulation that may well add costs to consumers. We're very conscious of consumer costs and people who live on fixed incomes who aren't automatically going to be able to pay for levies that are loaded on somewhere in the supply chain for waste and plastic. But in spite of that, I don't believe such a solution would work. When we look at packaging and plastic, so much of it comes from overseas. It comes from online shopping. We don't have the ability to inspect everything at the border and say, well, you know, your uh, electrical equipment has got too much polystyrene wrapped around it or too much plastic wrapping. Plastic, none of us likes it. We, we want consumers to say we choose not to purchase with this much packaging. But also what the uh, packaging covenant is, it's industry saying, uh, we'll work together and we'll agree not to use this much plastic packaging. Polystyrene is one of the nastiest products in the environment. It's being replaced by wood shavings, by something far more fibre based and environmentally friendly. Doesn't need levies to do that. We're bringing everyone with us and it is happening. Today is about industry participating in a collaborative effort about investment for the new recycling economy and the day is just beginning. The sessions are breaking out now and I'm sure by the end of today there'll be some more announcements made. I certainly uh, am conscious as someone who lives in rural and regional Australia about the pressures on land and land care and before I became really busy in Parliament I was secretary of my local land care group. I think it's reasonably well known that I um, participate in community cleanups that like everyone I talk about recycling and am part of that educational opportunity and I support all my wonderful schools because the changing of the conversation is one that happens very much from school level. I don't think anyone can have a conversation with students like the ones <coughs> that are here today and we've got 20 amazing individuals like the three you've met this morning without having a sense of this is the moment, this is important, this is the time when we need to take action across all sectors of society on plastic. But it really is students who are leading the way. So I've invited Portia from the small town of Corowa in my electorate. I went to her school and they have a no rubbish policy. So yeah, sure, you bring things that you need to put in a, a, in a rubbish bin when you come to school, but you take them home in your bag. Now that starts, as the students say to me, to educate parents. There's no bins at school. No, because we want a zero waste school. Because we're in regional and rural Australia, we've got a lot of worm farms, we've got a lot of vegetable gardens, so students are learning about organic waste and composting in the soil. They're learning about how you recycle everything that you grow in the ground and they're learning very much about where their food comes from so they all say that the messages that they would like us to hear are messages that when they talk to the adults in their world they often haven't heard. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, listen, um, as, I, as I mentioned before, um, we as an industry and we specifically as Nestle have the responsibility to lead the way. We are committed to 100% recyclable packaging or reusable packaging by 2025. But not only that, 
we also are committed to reduce the use of, sing of virgin plastic by a third. The big challenge that we have with this last uh, commitment is that currently the offer of food grade recycled plastic packaging is not available. It's not available in the amounts that we need. And that's why it's so important, the announcement that we made today about making sure that we make this first step to collect soft plastics first, and then make it into a valuable resource that will eventually go into the circular economy and will be uh, used in our factories as, as a chocolate wrapper, for example, right? We have a lot to do. We have a lot to, to um, add to the society. We are also committed to make sure that we help to educate consumers how to best sort their waste. And that wa uh, that's why we also committed to make sure that we put the uh, Australasian recycling label in all of our packaging uh, for all of the produ products that we manufacture locally because that's what we control. And it's important if you see, for example, in a, in a tin of, uh, of baby food, right? Um, you will find three different um, uh, red cycle, uh, sorry, um, Australasian um, labels. One for the tin, because it was, uh, it was in, in one bin. One for the lid, because it goes in another one, right? And that is, that is the contribution that we are, we are putting here to help get uh, the, the issue of, of plastic waste and of packaging waste in general um, a, a thing of the past. Okay. Okay.